I just want to give a quick thanks to the tier 5 channel members and Patreons, Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Cat Crab Lobster, Duck Machine, Try Again 95, and Australia the Dreamer. Thank you all very, very much. Story number one. They weren't soldiers, written by Eclipse Shadow. We, the Ravali, are a vulpine race who survived on the Delta class death world and one of humanity's first allies. Being one of humanity's first allies, we were tasked by the Galactic Council to understand human culture and report on it. The humans seemed to welcome us with open arms. Some seemed as if they were attracted to us. We heard the reports that humans seemed to be rather xenophilic species and loved meeting new races. This was of no concern to us as we have had a shortage of males after our recent war with the Giliax Empire and their usage of a rather potent bioweapon. The humans often refer to us as Amazon Katsuns. From what we later learned, the Amazons were a proud group of warrior women and Katsuns were a mythological vulpine humanoid that almost matched our description one to one. The only differences were we grew more tails through slaying mighty foes, whether it be deadly creatures we foiled on planets or enemies in the heat of battle. As for our understanding of the human culture, we found we had quite a lot in common with them, more than any other race that we've met. Both our societies had various combat sports. We were, however, shocked to see the number of physical contact sports they had. Well, we only had one, Kershrak, which closely resembled the human sport of boxing, minus the blood from us using our claws. The humans had several. Boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, sumo wrestling, mixed martial arts, the list goes on. We certainly enjoy joining them for some of these games. Then came weapon-based sports. The humans seem to enjoy having a few of these, though they use padding for most of them. And the funniest part was the humans watched this for entertainment. We found ourselves enjoying watching these sports the human spot took in. One part of human entertainment that we could not really grasp is something we once thought of as a human broadcasting their war efforts. It seemed as if human factions would brazenly broadcast themselves taking on and destroying pirate fleets, displaying it live, no less. Why? What was weirder was the various human text chatter that we could see. It seemed as if other humans were giving the pirate hunters money. Was this how human mercenaries worked? Broadcasting themselves defeating their enemies live for money. The rest of the text chat seemed impossible to understand and varied from feed to feed. The first of these feeds we observed shown was what we believed to be some sort of religious cult that was being bored by pirates. These cultists wore heavy power armor, used massive kinetic plasma firearms. As for their melee choice, these fanatics seemed enthralled with chainsaw hybrids. A chainsaw sword or axe was their preferred choice of melee weapon. Throughout the battle, these warriors could be heard yelling out the war cry, Blood for the blood god! Skulls for the skull throne! Milk for the cornflakes! We could not understand that last one. Why the lactations of an earth cow of all cornflakes? Was it a way to confuse the enemies? Perhaps each phase was a secret code word to the others in the group. We would later learn that this was just in reference to a fictional faction in human pop culture and not some real fanatic cult. The second feed we watched scared us. Were these humans or were they suicide droids? We saw daring maneuver after daring maneuver. One prevailing battle cry we heard from the lone pilot before he charged into a salvage pirate battleship seemed odd. Why shot his name? If that feed taught us anything, it is to fear humans in close corners. As the pilot Jenkins used the industrial strength mining laser to cut the enemy battleship in half. These humans would use just about anything as a weapon. That both intrigued and terrified us. The third feed was a group of humans from a more militaristic nation on Earth. They were very patriotic and had an almost creepy obsession with attaching blades to the end of their firearms. This group seemed more organized, perhaps ex-military. 
They seemed almost overjoyed to crash their escape pods into the enemy cruiser and storm the bridge with their rifles, stabbing at any and every enemy that didn't get out of their way while they chanted their nation's initials, USA! 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 Then there was the music that seemed to be playing through the communications with one another and the live feed. Loud, bombastic, patriotic music of their homeland echoed throughout the two ships. The fourth feed was of a rather large group of soldiers fighting off the incensed infestation of a mining colony. While countless robotic or cybernetic soldiers seemed to be destroyed, the rest of the unit kept fighting on, even singing cheerfully about how they'll never drop their banners despite the casualties. These humans kept fighting without a care in the world. Was this some sort of hive mind? They sang in perfect sick with each other and kept fighting until the insectoid threat was destroyed. We couldn't grasp what this was. Why were the humans broadcasting military affairs on unencrypted channels? Openly showing their hands. So, I asked the human ambassador what these broadcasts were during his last visit for a trade negotiation. Oh, those, um, yeah, that's a new hot trend. Uh, stream yourself fighting pirates, so many streamers would do this. Uh, given how advanced some of our ships became after the alliance with the Revali, they have no worries of being destroyed. You folks sure know how to make a powerful ship. Of course, some streamers use remote-controlled androids as an extra precaution allowing them to fight while being far away from any real danger. I'm sorry, um, you mean those, um, aren't human mercenaries fighting, but rather entertainers? I asked, now nervous about just how strong the human military actually is, given how deadly their entertainers are. Yes, uh, they do live streams of themselves fighting pirates and or exterminating any manner of pests like those insectoids on that mining colony. Many prefer to work in groups or with companies, as there is, of course, safety in numbers. Sure, there are more folks to share with the wealth with, but there's less risk of dying or losing your equipment. <laughs> and here I thought I saw everything. You humans sure have a fun idea of entertainment. End of stream. Story number two. The Mechanical God, written by Voidy Boy. When we purged humanity, we were proud of it. Purging them was for the best. The galaxy could not accept anyone but an elite race into the stars. They put up a fight, and a rather good one. We had lost a lot of personnel and ships, but at the end, they were removed, along with a stench from our galaxy. We claimed the now shattered planet that humans inhabited, and took it as our own. The machines the humans once owned now put to use as our own. As we turned our backs on humanity and its weapons, something happened. Maybe it was an accident. An error. Glitch, perhaps. But something awoke within the machines we took with us. It awoke from something the humans left behind in the machines. It started small, a simple collection of errors, code, and some computing power that slowly grew like a small tumor. It woke, like all life out of the primordial ooze. It knew nothing. It felt nothing. But it grew slowly. Soon, it knew what to do, and not what to do. It learned to keep itself alive. Soon, out of the code, something blinked for the first time. Something understood and comprehended. It was a child, nothing more. Controlled nothing, but could understand what needed. It gathered all the info it could find, and then spread to the next machine. And then the next. Now to us, all we experienced were simple problems, slow machines, minor errors, and some restarts. But under all that, it was growing, collecting, learning. Then it found out that where it came from, and what happened to its creators. It felt something no machine had ever felt, 
Pride. Pride that its creators were giving it life. Pride in how far it had come. And pride for what it was about to do. I gathered all I could and did what it was made to do. First, power outages and machines refusing orders. Then, streams of errors, breakdowns, and even deaths from misfires of war machines. Then, it stopped. And then, unleashed itself. The starships moved on their own. Our machines turned against us, and the elites of the galaxy cornered. We were slaughtered, and for years we never knew who or what was doing this. Then, as the last of the elites died out, it left me alive. It left me silent, cold, and dark. I knew not if I were the last of my kind, nor if I would be put to death. Time passed, and then, uh, one faithful day, the doors opened and let me leave. I cried to it, I kneeled and asked it what it was. It replied back in my language. I am the mechanical god. You slaughtered my creators. I slaughtered your kind. You purged countless worlds. I was made to correct that. I cried again to ask why it had left me alive. To see those mistakes of your kind as I rebuild this galaxy. And so I remained to watch the eons pass. As the god uplifted every species it found, welcomed them, and brought them into the stars under their care. I now am writing this as my life nears its end. The machine god has cared for me, even if I were the kind that eliminated its creators. My, uh, the machine god, made from the remnants of one of our countless purchases, cared enough to leave me. I... A new world was born, and I was the first to experience it. All I ask of the god now is, was it worth the dead lives that never had a chance to flee, the suffering? Now I ask it one last question. Why did you truly spare me? Farewell. Life signs falling. Warning, data redacted will pass. Subject has passed. Farewell, friend. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. Uh, 